If you've never seen a 3D photograph in a stereoscope, you should try to find one and do it. It's so funny to see still images in depth that we almost forget that this is how we see the actual world we live in. But if you take a moment to think about it, you may wonder that there's something really amazing about our visual system. The retinas in the back of our eyeballs are flat, so how can we see three-dimensional objects and perceive depth? If the natural light sensor device in our eyes has only two dimensions, how can we map all the space around us in three dimensions? A group of scientists at the MIT is set to understand the basis of this visual skill, our ability to see in depth, a feature they call stereopsis. Stereopsis is based on putting different kinds of information into two eyes. Uh, what you do is, that's, that's, that's the, one of the prime reasons you have two eyes, is that the, each eye looks at what's out in the visual scene from a slightly different perspective. And so the images from the two eyes are not identical. And that difference, often referred to as disparity, the brain can then compute to tell you where the object is in depth. Binocular vision is certainly great, but if you cover one of your eyes for a moment and take a walk around, you still have the feeling that the space around you is 3D. Does it mean stereopsis is wrong? Well, one aspect, the reason these tie together is that one aspect of depth perception has to do with what is called motion parallax, the ability of the brain to analyze where things are in depth based on the differential rate of motion objects at different distances from you move across the retinal surface. Okay, so that has to do with detecting motion. Scientists are now trying to find out how the brain integrates two kinds of perception. One of them takes motion as a cue to find out which objects are close or distant. The other one relies on the fact that we have two eyes, but we cannot show this effect on the flat screen you're looking at right now. Peter Schiller's group is using a smart experiment at MIT's Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences to expose volunteers to each of these features. They do it inside a functional MRI machine so that their brains can be filmed in action. I was one of the subjects. You have a display like this and you can rock it back and forth. Then you can create a situation where you see depth on the basis of the differential motion of the dots that are computed to be at different distances from you. So that's motion parallax. The other one, which is stereopsis, is based on putting different kinds of information into two eyes. We use the old-fashioned method of a person looking through a stereoscope, which separates the two eyes, and you can present two images, one to each eye, and then you, the brain puts those two images together. You see it as a, as a single image, and then if in one of those parts of the image you have a disparity, then that image is going to appear at a different depth. The device then we, that we have uh, can either present stereopsis alone, meaning the disparity, or motion parallax alone, or it can present both of those together. After wearing the elegant outfit required for me to get into the MRI magnet, I was ready to take part in the experiment. I would spend two hours inside the machine playing a simple game designed by Schiller. So we are ready to begin the first task. As a reminder, um, when the display appears, fixate on the green dot um, and decide whether or not you see depth or no depth. When the display disappears, when you see the white screen, you have two seconds to press the, white, the right button if you see depth or the left button if you do not. So at this point, I, um, I ask you not to talk not, and not to move and try to focus on the task at hand. Um, if you are ready to go, press the squeeze ball. The brain has this wonderful capacity of being able to integrate information. And so if you present stereopsis alone and motion parallax alone, you see depth. But if you present both of them together, the brain can integrate that, and so you can see depth better by having both bits of information. There are people out there who don't know that they lack stereopsis, and they go to, say, 3D movies, 
and, and they don't experience the 3D. And say, how come you don't experience the 3D? They don't because they lack stereopsis and they don't even know it. The reason that happens, there's several reasons. One is that a person may be born with the two eyes misaligned, which means strabismus, so you end up seeing double, so to speak. Or you may have one eye which doesn't see as well as the other, which is called amblyopia. And, and the reason we're doing these experiments right now is to then examine in detail to what degree people who had, had, have had corrective surgeries or corrective procedures early in life recover and have stereopsis. And so we're interested not only in stereoblind people and normal people, which we're studying here, we're interested in what, what the neural mechanisms are for each of those depth cues and how they are integrated at higher levels in the visual system. So that's, that's the overall research when it comes to studying depth. I had a sense of what it feels like to be stereoblind when I went through a second round of the experiment wearing an eye patch. Stereopsis doesn't work with a single eye. It's more difficult to see depth relying only on motion perception. In this case we tested him first binocularly mm -hmm. and now we test him monocularly to see how the brain activation is different under those two conditions. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Peter Schiller, I've learned I have a good 3D vision. It is still not totally clear whether some young people who don't have stereopsis can recover it, but if MIT's research on the problem will eventually lead to some progress on the field, I'm glad I could witness a part of it.